Make each piece as you go along and add it to its underlying shape. If you're interested, here's some fun facts to know. Of course we know that there are the state police badges for every state. But did you know there's approximately 18,000 different law enforcement agencies within the United States? That's a lot of badges. In fact, if you made one badge a day, you'd have enough work for almost 50 years. So, let's get started. And again, as I've said, this is very, very simple stuff. But it's a legitimate badge. It's around 1885, and it was a small button for the constables of the time. I think we can anticipate how to make this badge. Simply drawing a circle vector, creating a dome shape, and adding some lettering to the shape. I know, not very complicated, but it shows the basics of how to get started. One of the things to learn about creating badges is the use of text and how you can use the option of kerning. Kerning is a technique of separating or moving the letters apart from one another, positioning them correctly. There's no rules on how it should be done. It's more about how the end result looks. And once you have your 3D modeling complete and the lettering text complete, simply create the toolpaths required I'm not going to go too deep into how to create toolpaths to cut this out. I'm going to leave that for another lesson. Of course, if there's any 3D shape that the text is going to be on, make sure you choose to apply that toolpath to the 3D model. Of course, you can change the color of the toolpath so it stands out a little bit more. So, there's our first batch. Not very complicated. Let's take a look at another one. This is an actual U.S. Marshal's badge, obviously from the old Western days. We first bring in the image and then we create the vector for the outlying shape. You can adjust the contrast of the image so you can see where you're creating the vectors a little bit easier. I only need to draw the one side because I'll just simply flip it over so it's symmetrical. We want to join them together so we have a closed vector. And in the next step, we'll create a base shape. I have two vertical vectors that I'll use as my rails for a two rail sweep. Choose the left and the right as my rails. Choose the profile that I think it looks like. Choose the closed vector, choose the component, and we're going to keep everything inside of that closed vector. There's the base shape of our badge. The next would be to figure out how to create the cutouts. I draw a star and a circle. And I'm going to use the snipping tool to remove the vectors I don't want. Now be careful here because the order in which you use the clipping tool sometimes results in the wrong vectors being deleted. I zoom in a little closer and I'm going to snip the circle vector first. Now 
and then the pointed part of the star. So just take your time when you're doing this. And now we have the five triangular pieces to cut out. Here's an option. I could delete them from our model, but that may not be the best toolpathing to do. It may be more efficient to cut out your 3D model first and then simply use a profile toolpath to cut out your triangular pieces. Of course, I'm only going to be showing the finishing toolpath with the selected vector to show you the shape of the badge and now a profile toolpath to eliminate the triangular areas. You may want to include tabs in this toolpath, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. I double click on the waste area that I don't want to see and there's our badge. Now for the lettering, simply was choosing the text, creating the words, applying those words to the arcs as needed. In this case I'm going to do a simple pocketing toolpath. And color the toolpath so that I can see the contrast. I choose the outside vector, again creating a profile toolpath. And we'll double click on the waste area. And then compare it to our original. Again, it's not too complicated. You just have to look through each step along the way. So let's try something a little different and a little bit more complex. The classic sheriff badge. Again, we start to draw our vectors, which is simply a six-sided star. and we're going to then draw a circle and position it where we want it to be. We'll choose our circle and we'll use the circular copy option within the software to create six circles positioned around the center point. So now we're ready to create some shapes. I have choose the vector for the star and I'm going to create a domed shape component. I don't think the badge has straight edges, so I limit the height of the dome so it'll appear as if the component shape has rounded edges, more like a stamped out piece of metal. I choose my circles, I create a full dome shape, no limit to height, set those components to merge, and we have our badge. In this case now, I make a copy of my visible model. I hide my original components. I don't delete them, but I hide them. Now this would be the component I would cut out. I create a boundary vector of that 3D model, so I can use a profile toolpath to cut it out of my material. And of course, I need to add the words. If you're looking for fonts and which ones to use, I'll leave a link in the description of some of the font sites that I use. Some of the sites, the fonts are free, and some of the sites, you'll need to pay for them. But of course, they're of very good quality. I create a finished toolpath using the vector of the model. I choose my vectors for my text and use a pocket toolpath. 
you could use a V-carve toolpath if you'd like. I project my toolpath onto my 3D model. The process of cutting the badges out is very similar. You may need a roughing toolpath and a finishing toolpath and a pocket or V-carve and a profile toolpath to cut it out of your material. Comparing it to the original image, I think we're getting pretty good. Hopefully you're following along and you're seeing that it's not as difficult as you may have thought. So let's try something a little bit more complicated. We're going to use a lot of what we've learned about in the previous lessons. You know how to bring in an image into the software and if you right click on it you can adjust its contrast. This helps in drawing the vectors that are required. This is the same star as in our previous example, but in this case, it has more of a rounded, convex shape to it. So, I draw a circle and create my domed component. I select the vector for my star and my component, and I eliminate everything outside of the star that I don't want. Next, I select the little circles for the ends of the points of the star and create a component like we did previously. Set that component to merge and adjust the shape height or the base height as required. We've done this before. The inside details takes a little bit of time, but it's simply drawing vectors and creating shapes. So let's take a look at that. I draw the vectors of only one side of one of the points of the star. Since this design is symmetrical, it makes life a little bit easier. I take the vectors that I drew and I flip them over the center line. Let me show you a small trick my good friend Gary Campbell taught me a long time ago on how to make hearts. I draw a square, enter the node editing mode, hover over the right and then left side of the box, and press the A key to create an arc. And there's your heart. It's a fast and easy way to create a heart. Obviously I position them as need be. I then need to join the vectors together that I flipped over the center line. You'll notice I'm only dealing with one segment of the badge. I'm going to create the components from those closed vectors and then flip them around. My outer vector, I'm going to circle copy six times and join them together. And I'm going to create a component that has a negative shape. So it's a bit of a recess into my badge. I then select the other closed vectors and create the shapes I want. The hearts are going to be a simple flat component. 
Set to Add, adjust the height as needed. I then select and I want to create a new component. This will be a domed shape component. Again, Send to Add. The two inner closed vectors will be more of a pyramid shape. I forgot to include our little V shape at the top. I select that vector, mirror it around the center line. Join those two vectors together and create a shape. Selecting those four components that I've just created, I'm going to group them together and then copy them around the center. So we have six copies of those components to create our badge. My normal process at this time I compare my components to the original picture and we're getting close. And now we're ready to work on the center section. I choose my two circular vectors to create the ring, but it winds up being a problem. As you could see where my first shapes overlap the ring, they are added to the ring or the ring is added to them. If I choose to have the ring set to merge, I would need to raise the base height. But then that ring does not follow the underlying shape of the badge. So add doesn't work right away and merge doesn't work right away. So here's one little trick you can do. I'm going to make a model of the visible 3D components. So I'm only working with those. Of course, hide the other ones so I don't get confused. And with that component selected, I'll choose the outer circular vector and delete everything inside of it. So now my existing component of my decorative work does not overlap that ring. Let's create the ring again. No limit. We'll adjust the shape height as needed and we'll set it to add because I want it to follow the shape of the underlying badge. You can see how important it is to set the correct properties for the components. Adjusting the shape height, the base height, and the add, subtract, merge, or merge low option. So now let's create another little dome inside of this component that we've just created. I choose the circular vector again, choose the dome option within the profile. It's set to add, but the end result is not what I'm looking for. I can adjust the shape height, but it still is being added to that ring. Let's try something else. I'm going to choose the, the smaller circular vector to create the dome. I want this dome to still follow the underlying shape of the badge, 
but there winds up being a problem of little spikes where the new dome and the ring overlap one another. Well, that's not going to work. Here's one solution that you could choose. I hide the other shapes that I've created, especially the shape of the badge, and I create this center section separately as a flat component. I have my ring, I have my dome, they're set to merge so that they don't interact with one another. Again, adjusting the shape height or base height as needed. I turn off the little balls at the ends of the badge and I just want the ring and the inner domed shape and I create a copy of that visible 3D model. This is the component that then gets added to the base shape. With its property set to add, it will conform to the base shape and not create any problems. Our outside decoration has been trimmed before so that there's no interaction with that and we get a very pleasant looking design. For the center parts, it's simply drawing the vectors for the ribbons, the decorative scroll work, and of course the words. I'm going to create a new level just for these components. It helps me keep things separate. Also, if I need to make changes, let's just say if I wanted to create a deputy badge instead of a sheriff badge, I have those components separated from the rest. The vectors are easy, some arcs and some freeform work, and now to create just the components. I just need the one shape, and just like the previous badge, I don't think that this shape would have really sharp 90 degree corners or edges. So I'm going to limit the height of that so they are a little softer. This is part of the software that I enjoy the most. What you see is what you get. So I'm not quite sure what numbers to put in there to get the shape that I want, but my eye is always looking at my 3D view. When I'm happy, I click Apply, and my component has nice, soft edges. I do the same for the tail of the ribbon. And adjust the height so it looks as if it's underneath the main part. And then flip that over to the left. Hopefully at this point you can see the repetitive actions that are needed to create the badge. There's no mystery, nothing very difficult other than a little bit of time and effort and thinking through it. I'm going to make a copy of that and mirror it vertically. So now I have the two ribbons. Next up is the decorative work. I have the vectors drawn for the decorative work, but now I just simply need to create a profile, which would be just an arc. For me, drawing a circle is easy. Deleting the lower two parts of that circle. What remains is my profile. Choose the vectors I want. Click on the extrude and weave. Those will be the rails. Choose my profile. Set it to merge, just in case there's anything touching one another. I don't want any spikes. I'm going to take that component, and we're going to also mirror it vertically. But I'm also going to flip it horizontally, because I think it would look better. Again, this is your judgment call, how you would like the designs to be. 
and with just a few clicks, we're almost finished. I choose the vectors I've created for the words. As a side note, I went searching for this font and I couldn't find anything, so I wound up having to draw it by hand. I choose that same option of a domed profile, but limit the height of the dome so that these letters don't have square corners, but more of a rounded edge. This little technique also helps to prevent tear out of the material. with too many independent parts. I can hide the ones I don't want and make visible the components that I do. And there's our badge. The nice thing about creating individual components is I can go back in and adjust the shapes if needed. That inner dome was just a little bit too high, so I reduce its shape height. I don't throw anything away. I keep all of the components that I've created just in case something went wrong. I like to add a little bit of shadow shading to be able to see the badge a little bit easier. And again, compare it to the original picture. Pretty close. Is this something you can do? I believe you can. It's simply drawing vectors and creating components. If it doesn't turn out right, take two steps back and think through it. And then you're ready for your toolpathing. Roughing toolpath, finishing toolpath, profile cutout. Again, we'll keep the toolpathing for a separate lesson, as there's a lot of options to work through with that. I hope you learned a little bit about badges, how easily they can be done, so don't be nervous. In our last lesson, number 10, we're going to take a look at what I consider the most iconic police badge in TV history. The badge of Sergeant Joe Friday from the TV show Dragnet. If you'd like to know more about this software, subscribe and don't forget to check the bell so you're notified of the next video. And as always, if you have a question, send me an email, mm.mazalik.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.